Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're oh my business partner well here Gidget needs to say hello. Oh hello. <laughs> I think she's just decided to leave me though. She wants to come up and sit for like two seconds and then she's gone. You staying or going? Okay. Oh I love you. Um, okay, so today I kind of wanted to go over. I have my entire winter capsule wardrobe is all finished, even this sweater. I honestly did not think I would get the sweater knit, like completely knit, <laughs> but quarantine and other plans. Got this baby all finished. Um, we'll talk about it in more um, detail here in just a second, but I've got all of my tops finished. So, um, and I even went ahead and did a long sleeved um, boat neck style striped tee, which you guys saw on Sunday, um, how I draft that neckline. So yeah, I thought, I thought going forward that this would kind of be the formula with the capsule sewing as well. Um, you know, each season doing kind of like a plans and, you know, a few things I'm going to add, kind of what I'm putting into my capsule, that kind of thing. Then at some point during the season doing like a, here's a week's worth of outfits, just so you can kind of see things in style differently and in motion and how I'm wearing them for the week. And then at the end, um, kind of the end-ish of the season, just do a quick roundup of tops and jackets, toppers, that kind of thing, and then um, bottoms and one pieces. It's like two separate videos. So if that works for everyone, that kind of seemed to be um, a little bit more of the consensus back when I did the plans for 2022 video, just kind of what you guys enjoyed seeing. A lot of people, um, I think, really appreciated the week's worth of outfits way, as opposed to me just doing like a lookbook and trying to style things as many ways as possible like I did in the fall. So I think that's going to be the way forward. So today I'm just going to be going through all the tops and toppers and um, I'm just going to have them all on with my J. Crew jeans. Um, and then next week, next Tuesday, I'll go through the uh, bottoms and the one pieces and I'll probably just have the same top on for all the bottoms as well. Just so you can really see the bottoms and I'll talk you through the new things, the things that you guys haven't seen yet um, that haven't really had a chance to shine on the channel yet. So let me know if that sounds good. We're just kind of <laughs> trying new things and, and just deciding like what's going to work and what you guys like to see and all that kind of stuff going forward. So, all right, let's get into this so this video doesn't end up being super long. Although I only have, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 things. Um, I did not make all of these for the winter capsule. And in fact, I purchased a couple of them are purchased things, but I'll, again, quite a few of them were already in my wardrobe, even the things that I made. So I did not make everything brand new. So um, yeah, just to, as that as a caveat. So let's get into it. I am going to, instead of having Lena here and me putting things on Lena, um, I'm just going to put video of me in motion in the top and then I'll do a, a just a picture a freeze frame so you can really see what the garment looks like on me um, and I'll make it as big as I can without like covering my face. <laughs> Okay, so, so far I have just really enjoyed, I've already mentioned it um, here on the channel, but how much I have enjoyed this winter capsule. And I don't know that it's necessarily the pieces that are in it this time, or the color palette, or whatever, because I've enjoyed that in the previous ones. This was my fourth one that I've done, um, and I'll leave a link down below. It's the Everyday Style, and her capsules that she puts together, just to kind of explain those a little bit, because I've actually had a, a couple of questions on that as well. Um, what they are, are um, it's meant for you to be shopping, not making, but you know, I use it as inspiration for making instead of shopping. But it's a list of a whole bunch of links for everything. Um, she reuses pieces a lot from capsule to capsule. Um, she puts together a um, color palette that you can easily find in stores for that season. Um, and then not only does she have like multiple links for each item, but then she, um, if you do want to buy things. And I bought things from the links um, and asked for a couple things for Christmas and all that kind of stuff. But then she has a whole thing where she puts all the different outfits together and shows you how to wear them and what accessories to put with what and which shoes look best with which bottoms. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And then she'll put together a travel wardrobe if you're gonna be going on vacation, where you have, you know, she picks out like, here's 10 pieces that would be great for a travel um, wardrobe. She'll put together an essential wardrobe. If you're only, if you're wanting, you know, more of a minimalist and you only want a very small wardrobe, she'll put together just a very, I don't even know how many pieces. The normal capsules are anywhere, I think, from 35 to 40 pieces, and that includes jewelry and shoes and bags. Um, 
And then, yeah, she does something even smaller called the essentials, if you just want the essentials. And then she even does one for work. So if you're, which isn't new things, it's just she's picking out, like, if you're only wanting this capsule because you're going back to the office, for instance, my sister went back to work and she purchased the capsule and really only focused on the um, pieces that were, like, work appropriate. So she had that broken down, like, if you're only wanting this, you know, for work, for instance, these are just the pieces that you kind of need, that kind of stuff. And obviously, you can buy whatever you want, but... <laughs> I just really like them because they help focus my um, shop, my shopping, but also my my fabric shopping, my making, and help me focus on getting dressed and looking good and put together. And I talked about that already, so I won't go into that anymore. But that's kind of what it is. And um, yeah, I've just really enjoyed this winter capsule. I've just felt like. And again, I'm not really sure what it is. It may be that I've got everything in my closet right there when I first walk in. I am going to do the closet clean out with her if you guys follow her on any of her social media outlets here soon. She's going to be starting this thing. It's a 10 day closet clean out. Um, you purchase the class and then she's going through in person, like maybe on the Facebook group. Um, I'm not sure how, but anyway, doing the whole closet clean out and how to um, get your closet to where it's functional for you. And I think I might do that with um, her as well. So anyway. That may be it though. It may be that I just, I pulled everything out, put it upstairs that I wasn't wearing, the things that aren't in the capsule but that are still winter appropriate are just, are in the second section of my closet. I have like two um, little divider things. <laughs> I'll show you guys my closet someday. Someone asked, it's not anything fancy by any means but I can definitely show you. Um, anyway, I think just having everything there and only the things in the capsule in that one little section has really helped as well. So just really enjoyed it. All right, let's get into these tops and jackets slash toppers things. Okay, <laughs> so first off, I did make myself three new Cashmere Concord t-shirts. I have been in dire need of some long-sleeved shirts. Um, I usually wear like a three-quarter length. Sometimes I'll do a short sleeve, but a lot of times three-quarter length is kind of like my go-to. But in the winter, when I'm trying to put things underneath sweaters or um, coats and stuff, you know, you like to be able to grab the sleeve to like put it through. <laughs> my daughter was putting on a jacket and a shirt that I just made her, uh, but it's got a big voluminous sleeve that's just like it hits three-quarter, and she was like trying to like grab the edge of it to like put it into her coat. And I'm like, God, that is, that is the worst. When you can't, when your sleeve gets like all pushed up inside your coat and so uncomfortable. Um, so I do enjoy long sleeve shirts, number one for warmth, but also just um, I wanted some with actual long sleeves. So I made a navy one and a cotton jersey from, um, well, both the cotton jer jerseys are from, the solids are from Style Maker Fabrics. It's my one of my favorite cotton jerseys. And then the third one is from um, Minerva. And um, anyway, I did one with the V-neck, the navy one with the V-neck, which I I don't think I've, no, I have. I've made the cashmere at V-neck. I couldn't remember if I've done her neckline before, um, her V-neckline before, but I just think that it's, it's lovely. And I know that I've made it before because I noticed it was a little lower than I wanted it to be. So I raised it an inch, um, which was just, I just raised that point an inch and then took that amount out of the neckband so that it would still stretch and fit really nicely. And I think I got a nice fit on there. But yeah, a navy V-neck t-shirt, needed one, very basic. <laughs> it wasn't super fun to sew or anything, but I needed it. And it's it's really gone the long haul in my wardrobe so far. The second one I did was a scoop neck in um, ivory. It's the same fabric as the navy, just in the kind of vanilla, she call it vanilla ivory um, colorway, but I wanted a white cream, vanilla, whatever, is my white. I have a warm undertone, so I don't wear bright white, but um, cream is kind of my white. So I wanted a light colored t-shirt just for layering and all that, you know, again, I wanted a dark one and a light one, <laughs> so a navy and a cream one, because um, I don't wear black really either, although I did throw in a pair of black pants into this capsule first time for uh, black in my wardrobe in a long time. And then the third one was the one that you guys have already seen. That is the um, boat neck hack that I did, and I did it in a navy and white stripe, cotton spandex from Minerva. Um, I've used this fabric a couple of different times. I have one, um, a shirt that is three quarter length in the same fabric that's also the boat neck hack, but I didn't put the facing on it. I had just turned under the um, neckline and stitched it, and it's just not wearing very well. But um, I wanted a long sleeve one anyway. Now, you're 
you're, you may, may not notice, but you may notice that I have actually not hemmed the body of this t-shirt yet because <laughs> I'm waiting. I ran out of my so keasy double-sided, one-inch double-sided, um, tape that I like to put at the bottom of my t-shirts. I, I put it at the bottom of my sleeves a lot too, but I really like it at the bottom of the t-shirts because it helps you keep your fabric also from not, um, you know, when you wash it and then the hem flips up on itself, just the nature of Jersey. Um, but that it does help anchor things and keep kind of as a state, it works as a stabilizer a little bit in addition to making it super easy to, um, so, so I've not hemmed that yet. I'm waiting for more to come in. So I've done the sleeves, him to the sleeves, but I've not hemmed the body yet, but yeah, that'll be coming. I love this shirt though. <laughs> it's going to get so much wear and into the spring as well because I'll still wear a long sleeve shirt well into the spring and uh, we'll see how well this three quarter, the other three quarter one holds up. I mean, it, it may be time to replace it as well with the faced um, neckband. I mean, how many navy and white striped boat neck shirts does one need? <laughs> Just fits into my style. All right, the next one is my um, corally um, warm pink fuzz that I made my itch to stitch fuzz. I have a sew along on this. Um, and I, it, this was kind of the, I was kind of being a little bit general with the pink that was in this capsule. Hopefully I've already put the colors up so you can kind of see the general colors that I'm working with. This was the more the pink that I was kind of, this the color of the cuffs here, that I was really kind of wanting like the warm pink, which is the pink that I can wear. Um, but I really like this coral. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun and bright, especially in the winter. I just think it's lovely. So uh, yes, this is my Fawz. You guys have seen this already. Again, it was on the sew along. Also, I do want to say someone had asked a question on what is it, what's the top doing something, it's doing something funny on the left hand side. And I honestly, I hadn't even noticed anything. But after I read that comment, I was um, looking at it a little bit. And yes, my cover stitch gathered up the fabric a little bit in this one section there on the left hand side when I was top stitching that um, seam allowance from the neckband down and it's just done something kind of weird there. I mean, it really doesn't bother me that much, but someone did ask. So if you're wondering what's going on there, that's what, ha what's, what happened. It kind of gathered up a little bit with the cover stitch. I could unpick the cover stitch and do it over again, but I'm not going to. <laughs> So I'm just going to wear it as, as I have been. I have been wearing it as is. But if you're wondering, um, that is what happened there on the left-hand side. So, um, yeah. It, yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah, see, sometimes things happen in sewing. And not all the time do you need to unpick them. It's kind of the way of, you know, it's still better than ready to wear. And uh, I'm not a perfectionist. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up is just my white classic um, shirt, my Liesl & Company classic shirt. Um, I love this shirt. I mean, it's just a white button-up shirt. In fact, I just made one for my daughter in her white. So I used um, the Style Maker fabric. I've made mine quite a while ago, but it's their um, shirting. And it's in, she has it in white and also vanilla, I think. And I did the vanilla for myself, and then I bought the white for my daughter and actually just ended up finished. In fact, you can see it right there. It's waiting for her to try it on so I can figure out button placement. That's all it needs is the buttons, but uh, just made her one. I love that button up shirt pattern though. I have changed the hem. I don't like the way she finishes off the hem. Um, so I kind of redrew the curve on the hem just cause I, yeah, I, I just like the way um, I do it better. <laughs> but other than that, it's just, yes, this is just a standard, um, Oh, I haven't told you guys what sizes I made. In the Cashmere at Concord t-shirt, I make a size 10. I grade to a 12 at the waist and back to a 10 at the hip. I um, shortened the body by an inch, which is very typical for me. And I shortened the sleeves by an inch. Also very typical for me because I'm only 5'2". Um, what else? Oh, and with the Cashmere at Concord, I make the GH cup on that. So it's the 10 with a GH cup and I grade out to a 12 at the waist. Um, the Foz is a size eight with the full bust front. Okay. The classic shirt <laughs> is a size 10 with a D cup. Okay. Next up <laughs> is the, my chambray shirt or denim button up shirt, I guess, which is my Vogue 8772. Um, I did a whole series on this shirt, um, pattern back last spring. Um, it was a one pattern three ways. This was the one that was made just 
guess it was just, no, I, I made the pussy bow blouse um, from that pattern too. Anyway, it's just your standard button up shirt. I did do a full bust adjustment on it, um, but this is the size 14 with a full bust adjustment. Uh, I think I added two inches, three inches maybe maybe three, three inches across the front. So an inch and a half on each side. I don't really remember. I'll pop a video <laughs> or link up to the video for you to look. Um, it's been in my wardrobe forever. I love that shirt. I, it'll look really good underneath both the white button up and the chambray are going to look great underneath this sweater too. Okay, next up is my Azores top by Itch to Stitch. I was a pattern tester for this one. This is also a size eight with a D cup. Um, I think this one had actual cup sizes, but I love this shirt. I haven't worn this as much as I thought I would, mostly because it's been really cold here. It got really cold, and this is just a rayon chalet shirt, and um, I have a feeling that when it starts to warm just a little bit up, you know, as, as we get into the spring, um, I'll start wearing it more just because, you know, it will, it's just really chilly to wear right now. I'm wearing all the sweatshirts and cozy knit tops and all the layers right now. So, um, yeah, I've, I mean, I have worn it, just not as much as I kind of thought I would, but I think once the weather warms up just a little bit that that will be pulled out a lot more. But it's a great blouse. I really love, I love that pattern. It's such a good one. And the fabric is some of my favorite fabric ever. Um, next is this sweater. This is the um, Stockholm V-neck sweater from um, Petite Knits. I think that's right. And actually, this is supposed to be knitted in two strands of mohair, silk mohair. I did it with a strand of um, fingering weight and a strand of mohair. I got the same gauge. I did a test swatch. Got the same gauge that I needed um, for the pattern. Went ahead with it um, and made this up. And actually, I cast this on, um, let's see, on February or no, January like 10th, I think and um, just got a little bit of it done, but then I got sick and was in quarantine for, um, I don't know, five, six days, and I finished it. <laughs> now, uh, I'll talk more about this. I'm gonna do a what I've been knitting video because I also finished a sweater for my daughter in January that I had cast on in December, and I'm currently working on a um, button-up sweater vest for her, for my daughter, and so um, I'll probably wait until I finish that, and then I'll do all three of these in a little bit more detail, but I was worried I was gonna run out of, um, uh, yarn and the yarn the variegated yarn was one I got on sale that was being discontinued from Miss Babs and so I bought the three skeins that she had and um, I was getting really nervous I was gonna run out and I may have I may have been cutting it like really close but I didn't want to sacrifice any of the length of the body I wanted it to be the length it was so I went back and got a solid color um, that was the same as the um, um, the same color as the silk mohair I was using and did the striped, um, actually I've got them rolled up, but yeah, did just kind of a section on each sleeve and also the body. I do have leftover yarn of both the solid and the variegated. I might be able to get a short pair of socks out of them. Um, like maybe a little bit taller than ankle socks maybe. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just gone into the stash for now. So yeah, I'll talk more about this. Um, going forward when I do a, what I've been knitting type of video later. Um, next, a J. Crew camel sweater. This is a cotton and wool blend um, sweater, the teddy sweater. I actually had their teddy sweater, um, which is all cotton, from the spring. It was from J. Crew Factory. Loved it. It was just a, a really great little lightweight sweater, so I got this one. This has shrunk up a little bit. The I mean, the wash instructions say to wash it in the washing machine, which is what I've been doing on a delicate hand you know, hand wash cycle in cold, and then I'm letting it um, line dry. But I do feel like it has shrunk just a little bit in the length. Um, but, you know, I love the color. The color is so good, and it's still great for layering. It's, it's a lighter weight sweater, but this one's got wool in it. Um, next is my Lands In Cream Cashmere Sweater. You guys have seen this quite a few times. This is quite a few years old. Love it. I love the crew neck. It's just like a great, another little layering top. Um, next is my Cashmere Stanton, my, the evergreen colored one, the one, um, gosh, I can't, Scribbles, I think is what it's called, or it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's Ponderosa is actually the name of the background color. I just can't remember what the print is, uh, but this is the Stanton hoodie. You guys saw this in my Stanton hoodie, um, video, and I've been wearing my other Stanton hoodie as well, even though it doesn't technically fall into these, the color scheme here. I actually really like the other one, the other um, kind of a terracotta colored one with my um, cranberry colored Fortuna pants um, because there's a little bit of that color in that sweatshirt. I've been wearing them both a ton. Love them both. 
<laughs> but yes, the evergreen colored one has been, yeah, it's just a really great staple. It kind of walks the line between sweater and sweatshirt. So I'm really loving that look as well. I really love that pattern. Um, next, my Bainbridge pullover. This is Itch to Stitch. Um, this is like over a year old as well. I was a pattern tester for this way back when, when the, um, maybe about this time last year, when the pattern was released. Um, it's just a great little throw on jacket and um, I've been wearing it as a sweatshirt kind of. So just throwing it on over a long sleeve shirt, that kind of thing. And I get a lot of compliments on it. Um, the Liberty uh, fabric there at the, you know, neckline and stuff and at the cuffs is, is a... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love that pullover. Um, also, my Navy um, Constellation, my Love Notions Constellation um, sweats, sweatshirt pullover, quarter zip, whatever you want to call it. I've been wearing this a ton, too, and I've been wearing it like a um, sweatshirt as well, so less as a jacket and more as just like another layer. I like to zip it up a little bit and then, you know, turn the collar back on itself so it looks like a collared sweatshirt kind of. Um, but I have been wearing this with jeans, with my corduroys, with uh, my Fortuna trousers. I've been wearing it casual. I've been dressing it up a little bit. It's just a, yeah, it's, I've been wearing that one a 10 as well. And then we are to the four um, kind of cardigans. The first one is my, um, well, I've got two Harper cardigans. Sinclair Patterns has a free um, cardigan pattern. I've made it a few times now. Um, love it. It is such a great cardigan pattern and it's free free patterns. Great. <laughs> but I have a navy one that I have made back last spring that I've worn. I mean, that's been a, a big time go-to. I wear it all the time. And then I made a new one this year, um, this season, in this camel colored net that I got from Distashify. And I love this one. It is such a great color of camel. I just, I get compliments on the color. It just fits right into my color palette and I, I really love it. But both of them are great. It's such a great, it's a really great pattern and for free. You all, you all should have it <laughs> because it's free. It has files for if you're short, tall, or regular. It's got like a cropped one. The one that I, I make is the classic length, which comes like um, low hip, um, but then there's like a, a few longer ones as well versions. I mean, it's a lot for a free pattern. Um, next is my um, Lily Kate makes Be Thankful Cardigan. I knitted this up about this time last year, probably. Um, it's such a good cardigan pattern. If you're a knitter, I know not a lot of you are knitters and that's fine. So <laughs> you don't have to be, uh, but it is one that I knitted last year and I've been wearing it a ton. It kind of the brown camel-y color um, is perfect and I've been wearing it. I love it over the striped top. Um, I love it over the solid tops. Um, I haven't worn it over any uh, collared shirt yet. I just, cause it's really warm. Uh, it is a merino blend. There's other stuff in there though. It's just a very, very warm sweater <laughs> and it will toast you up super quick. So um, yeah, I have to be careful what I wear underneath it or I do get really hot. Um, and then finally is my, um, also a Vogue 8772. This one I hacked, um, and I'll pop a link up to that video so you can kind of see how I did that. But this is a, my shacket, my cranberry colored shacket, and I have been wearing this one. I didn't wear it, um, very much at all after it was made last year for no real reason. I don't know if it just spring got there and I was kind of over that color because I was ready for brighter colors or what, but I have been wearing it so much this winter, which is great. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just hacked the um, button-up shirt pattern from Vogue, the 8772, um, added pockets on the front. Um, I used, this is a rayon jacquard, I think is what it was. I got it from Style Makers, um, gosh, probably a year and a half ago now. Uh, but it just, it's kind of thicker a little bit. So um, it makes a great little jacket. And I wear it like a cardigan. And I've been wearing it a ton. And it's so fun. <laughs> So there you have it. Those are my tops and toppers slash jackets, layering piece, whatever you want to call it, for my winter capsule. So that is kind of everything. And um, yeah, well, see, I think the spring is being released the beginning of March, March 8th, I think, maybe is what she has said. Um, but I'm really keeping my eyes peeled. A lot of times she'll start to hint at the, you know, showing pictures and stuff of the color palette, um, which is always a lot of fun. And uh, then I can kind of you can kind of guess a little bit like what types of garments are going to be up there. 
so I can start doing a little bit of fabric shopping um, and getting, you know, a few things. Not that I need to do any fabric shopping. I've done so much fabric shopping recently. I probably have everything I need in my stash, but I also have a birthday coupon for Style Maker Fabrics for February because my birthday's in February. So, I mean, we hate for that to go to waste. So we'll see what happens there, but that is it for the winter capsule. Okay, Friday, I have got, um, I've been sewing for my daughter a little bit and I've got a few things to share with you um, for her. So that will be on Friday. I've not finished her Jessica blazer yet, but that is in the works right now. Um, I'm just kind of doing a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time um, because it's such a big project. But yes, I'm gonna have that finished with for her probably hopefully by the end of February, maybe March, because I'd like for her to be able to wear it. Um, I mean, we won't really hit summer. She'll be able to wear a blazer probably through the middle of May um, here in Indiana, but um, yeah, I'd like for her to have it as soon as possible so she can start getting some wear out of that. But I have been busy making her some other tops. So um, hopefully uh, you enjoy that and that will be on Friday. All right, that's all I've got, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys again on Friday. Bye.